In this next tutorial, we're going to work with our shape tweens and shape hinting. Now, I'm going to begin my shape tween by typing in some text. And I've made my text very, very large so I can see it. And it'd probably be best for you to do so as well. And so use um, a font that's pretty bold just because that gives us a nice look. And I'm going to right click and convert this um, text item into a symbol because we're going to do the animation inside that. And we'll call this text anim, anim being all uppercase. That way I know if I look in my library, I'll know which ones are animated. The shape distortion is an animation, the text is an animation. Anyway, let's go back to properties. I'm going to double click to go inside the timeline of this animation and I'm going to create a new keyframe at frame 30. So insert keyframe and then let's change the text to the other letter that we want. Now I'm using my initials, initials which are J and R and you'll notice that um, they're there. Now I can right click and try and create a shape tween but it won't allow me to, and the reason why is because I don't have shapes yet. So I need to convert both of my um, text items here to shapes. So we'll right click on each text item and choose break apart. So now I have my text there, um, which has been converted to a shape, and now I can right click and choose create shape tween. Now you'll notice that this shape tween looks pretty bad. And one of the reasons it looks bad is because I'm going from a text item which is not hollow to one that has a hole in the middle. And that can create some undesirable results. So one of the things that I can try and do is fix this just a little bit by using a little bit of shape hinting. So I'm going to zoom up a little bit. I'm going to go to the first um, shape here. And I'm going to do Control, Shift, and H or modify shape add shape hint and now I can place this where I want it to be so I'm going to place the first one there and I'll do control shift and H again to create a B now let's go to the last keyframe and you'll see that B is there so I'm going to move B down and then move A down you'll notice that when they are touching a point they'll turn green indicating that they have snapped something now if we take a look at this, we've definitely changed the way this animation works, which is nice. We may even try doing something just to see if it works. Um, we could possibly try filling that hole, this white hole here, and then actually animating, putting in a white shape right here, which is the exact same shape. That way it might pick up both shapes and animate them at the same time. But anyway, you get the point that shape hinting can do a little bit to improve the style of this. Now, how exactly can shape hinting help in a real situation? Let's go back to the animation that we had of this distortion. Double click on it to go inside its timeline, and you'll remember that it looks pretty weird. It's not animating properly. So you'll notice right now that certain parts are animating okay, but the green is definitely not animating well. Well, here's where shape hinting can help. If I add shape hinting now with Control Shift and H, I can add the shape hints where I want. Let's do Control Shift H again, B and C. One more. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Now I'm going to go to the end keyframe and C snaps to that. B snaps to that corner and A snaps to that corner. And let's see if that's improved that. It's definitely improved it a little bit, but it's also messed up things just a tiny bit. So you'll see that once you get started with this, you pretty much have to continue. So I'm going to do D and E up the side. Whoops. You've got to be pretty accurate about clicking on these. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side as well. So I'll do Control H, move that down to F, Control H, Control H again, Control H, and the last one on that corner. Now let's go to the last keyframe and put these in backwards order so they snap.
and let's see if we have fixed that animation. Well, look at that. We've even made it worse in some ways. So code hinting can be a problem. It can fix some things, but it can also mess up some things. And we'll see if we can get that to work. Sometimes you have to adjust things afterwards. It could be that I've got something messed up somewhere. Well, it looks like I see what it is. I've got D and E uh, messed up. E needs to go here, and D goes there. And now it's fixed. So that was the problem that I had. I had those backwards. So you'll see that they kind of have to move one to one. But you'll see that we've definitely fixed that animation using code hinting. Now, one problem that I do want to point out is if you accidentally click off of this object and you don't see the code hinting anymore, then you'll have to make a new code hint just to be able to see the existing hints. So that can be kind of frustrating at times when you click off of it and the code hinting disappears. Anyway, that is um, the end of code hinting. So let's do our last animation, which is a shape distortion using a gradient. Now this one's pretty simple. I'm going to begin by creating an oval, or rather a circle, and the stroke that I'd like, I mean the fill that I'd like to use is the radial gradient. Now I'm going to take off my stroke as well, so that all we really see is the gradient. So here is my gradient on a circle, and I'm going to convert this to a um, movie clip just like the other ones. So let's right click, choose Convert to Symbol, and this is going to be my gradient anim. Now double click on it to go inside. And to alter this gradient, what we want to do is duplicate our keyframe that we have here, just so we have the exact same thing. So you can right click and choose Insert Keyframe, or I use the Alt Drag method. And now I'm going to go to the Free Transform tool and choose the Gradient Transform tool instead. Now the Gradient Transform tool gives me the ability to move the center point of a gradient, to scale horizontally, to scale in all directions at once, and to rotate my gradient. So there are a lot of different things that you can do with your gradients here. But I'm going to move, let's see, make that a little bit more circular and scale it up just a little bit. And I'm going to move my gradient over to this side, there. And I'm going to go back to the first keyframe and move my gradient up to the top and maybe scale it up just a little bit. Now in order to do the tween between these, it's a shape tween just like the others, right click in between the two keyframes and choose Create Shape Tween. And you'll now see that that, anim that gradient will animate. And this is pretty cool because you can create the look of maybe that ball kind of turning in space. So if I move that enough to the outside and move this enough to the outside, it'll almost look as though we have light that goes across that, almost like there's a ball rolling or something like that. So it can be pretty neat what you can do with animated gradients. You can do sunrises and sunsets, and of course, you can do three-dimensional looking objects as well. So let's go back to scene one and save your work and test it with control enter. And you'll see we have our regular shape distortion, a shape distortion with a little bit more going on and shape hinting that fixed that, text with sh some shape hinting, and then a shape tween using gradients. And we're ready to go on to the next tutorial on coding our buttons.